One of the first things you want to do after you install and set up your NAS for the first time is start to explore many of the functions in the various applications that are provided that are automatically installed and also provided for you to install at your leisure. Uh, before you do, I always recommend that you first have a quick look at the control panel. Control panel is, as the name would suggest, as those of us familiar with Windows would know, is the area where many of the system functions are controlled. On the control panel on the left hand side you have at, aptly named the system settings where you're going to be able to configure, change, set up um, network security hardware, power fail, failover and, and startup functions, notifications and so on. Privilege settings obviously, your users and the way the desktop works and many of the um, QTS software applications work is that the menu on the left hand side selects functions as you can see here which if I single click on will open up that part or that particular um, part of the control panel's configuration. Um, down in the network area you can see I have the FTP server so this is an FTP server which is running in the NAS and will then be accessible for by FTP clients from inside the the um, your local network or if you allow it externally. Uh, there's SMTP, there's um, network recycling and then there's applications. Many of these functions rely upon you first setting up a few basic users and user groups and shared folders. The shared folders idea is much the same as it is in Windows and, and iOS uh, environments. Uh, it's best to set that up first and make your decisions on how you're going to run your network. If you're running a home network, you may not necessarily want to have a, a domain and a domain controller, although there is the capability to, to use a domain controller from the NAS and for it to be the domain controller rather. Um, however, if you're just running this in a home environment, that's probably a bit of an overkill for most people. And so it's better to... Um, perhaps just set up some users and some normal user groups which we'll go into next. Before we get into the depths of that I just want to run through some of the icons and the functions that are in this control panel. Now I'll be just explaining them at a higher level in this video and be going into each of them where we're applicable in a lot more depth as we move through this series. So general settings are the are in relation to the NAS itself, um, how, where it gets its time, it can get the time from the internet or you can set the time here, um, policies for password strength um, and time. Storage manager is the part of the software, as you can see it's opening up a separate window, um, that manages the disk drives or RAID configuration. Uh, some machines might have um, SSC drives and caching, all of that is managed from within here. You've also got machines that have cache acceleration, which is a, a couple of SSD drives installed in memory to preempt, you might say, um, the, the software's uh, access to files on your NAS and keep the most commonly used, a bit like a proxy server for the internet, but for disk drives and for um, operations. This is a really handy feature if you're going to be running um, Hyperstation or Windows Terminal Server, if, uh, sorry, uh, the virtual machines in your uh, NAS which might be hosting other operating systems. So for example if you were going to set up a, a NAS that has a couple of Windows virtual machines which will be fully blown Windows servers running inside the NAS and accessible from anywhere inside or outside your network. Um, Typically those sorts of environments place a lot of, um, put a lot of I.O. stress on the network so having case acceleration is a great way to speed that up. Um, it also manages snapshotting which is a really handy way to take uh, snapshots of your, your drive as it is at a single point in time. Uh, and when we get through the, and start talking about backup, we'll explain why all these options are here and why they're all so important to protect your systems, to protect your data and to create um, redundancy 
should something go wrong, you've got some kind of a, a, a systematic way to fall back and recover. Um, power management, there's all sorts of goodies in there, like being able to power the NAS down uh, to, 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 to reduce the amount of noise in your home or your office, or to uh, reduce the amount of heat. Not that they produce a lot of heat or noise, but any, it, sometimes it, that may make a difference depending on your environment. And also functions like wake up on land so that the NAS will sit there quietly powered off until during minimal um, power until somebody actually wants it and then it'll fire itself up. Pretty good. Notifications, firmware update, there's another backup and restore function. The one I was just referring to in Storage Manager um, is, is called through, is works in conjunction with this. Um, you can have external drives, which means you can plug in. Now, this is important for those of you who have. Um, already got some um, a external hard disk drive in your network for example so let's say for example you've got a home network and you've already got a, a Western Digital 3 terabyte uh, network connected or USB connected drive um, when the NAS, when you put a NAS uh, Superbox NAS in it, it sort of brings all that together because you can plug that device into the NAS and then the NAS will treat it as part of it, its extended storage uh, one of the really useful ways to do that is uh, when we talk about backup is to use the that um, detachable USB connected disk drive as a, a secondary backup and the NAS will manage all that for you. It's very clever. Uh, system status, uh, there's functions in there for you to see what sort of what sort of um, what is happening in relation to programs running, network usage, memory usage, CPU usage, who's which particular applications using resources and uh, and manage that. System logs is pretty obvious. Um, <clears throat> down here in the privilege, as I mentioned earlier, users and user groups to set up shared folders. Shared folders would typically be a number of folders that you nominate. Here's a couple of examples here. Um, there's a VM folder which on this server is a, is a folder which under which stores all virtual machines and uh, their backups. Sorry, no, their backups are up there. Uh, and the web, the web facilities generally QNAP creates this folder for you automatically when you start installing uh, web servers and web-based functionality, and it installs all the programs under that folder called web. But it's a, a shared folder that you can assign certain users to have access to, or not have access to. And there's a folder there called computers that uh, somebody's created to presumably back up um, PCs on a network to uh, a folder on the NAS <clears throat> for some level of the redundancy. Uh, quota is a, is a facility so that if you have, for example, um, shared folders used by members of the family, you can set up so each member of the family only has a certain amount of space that they can use. And after that, it won't allow them to add more space, forcing them to, to manage their space and clean up all their old files. Quite useful. Domain security, domain controller, uh, for those of you who want to run the system as a domain controller, you have the capability to set that up. <clears throat> Under network services, uh, you've got uh, file sharing capabilities for Apple network to, to virtually um, simulate being an Apple network, an FS, NFS surface, or a Microsoft network, all three. Uh, for FTP, it runs as the FTP server. Now, why is this useful? Well, it's really useful because the NAS just sits there doing its job and being the FTP server. And you don't have to remember to fire up a PC to be the ref to be the receiver of an FTP request from ex from a, an external uh, PC or service. It just is the FTP server and it sits there managing it and also managing it from the point of view of access. Now, um, if um, the, to, to, to manage who gets access to files on there when they uh, log in through FTP. That's all managed by the user that they use to log in and the shared folders that that user has access to. So it's exactly the same control mechanisms that you use for accessing files internally. Telnet, SNT, SNMP, these are all services that are available to set up and uh, be, be used <coughs> Um, at your will. And software applications, which is, as I said before, I'm going to get into in a little bit more depth later. But some of the ones to really to, to quickly point out, the hybrid desk station basically uses the HDMI output from the back of the NAS. And there are 
some NASs have three HDMI outputs, and there's a good reason for that, which again we'll get into as we're moving through. It can the NAS can pretend, can simulate being an iTunes server. It can simulate being the deal and A media server to everybody on your network and externally, by the way. It does the multimedia management, so it can act as a, a multi a media server for um, your network. It does the transcoding management, which for those of you who don't know what transcoding is, uh, if you are playing a movie, for, let's say for example you're playing a movie on an iPad, an iPad's screen size, you know, it's not that, it's it's small, it's uh, about 200 mils across. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't require the same amount of um, data or um, pixels, shall we say, as a high definition television set. You'd, I'm sure you'd agree to that. So, transcoding, the, the idea behind transcoding is why send all that data to a small device which can't use it and then clog up your network. So, transcoding means that what it will do is it will, as somebody requests to play a multimedia file from the NAS, it will go and figure out what size that screen is on the receiving device and only send a f um, the data that's suitable and necessary to get a high quality picture on that device. Um, basically transcoding it down to the size and the resolution of the receiving device, which is very clever. So it will play in full high definition on your high definition television set, but play high definition on your iPad, but, but at a reasonable speed. And I might add, uh, it's possible to then play a file from outside the network uh, using the transcoding, because the transcoding is going to downscale it. To a, to a size which is suitable for the, the line speed and the receiving device. Quite clever. You can install not just one set web server, but many web servers on this NAS, on any NAS. Uh, you have this principle of virtual hosts where you can set up a number of services. And as you can see in this demo system, we have um, Dolphin, which is a, um, a social networking product with various websites, test sites, <clears throat> multiple um, in, uh, WordPress or and or um, Drupal or Joomla sites you can be running at the same time on the same NAS. So you don't need multiple machines and physical devices. You just have them all running on the one box, backed up at the same time <clears throat> and safe and secure. Uh, LDAP server, the virtual private network. You can set the, this device up as a both a server and a client. Uh, it runs an SQL server for, that is then used by other products such as your Joomla's and your Drupal's and your WordPress. Um, it has antivirus built in, a radius server, much, much more. So as we move through the other videos, we're going to talk about these various functions in a little bit more detail. Thank you.